Welcome back to the channel, it's Chris from L3D and today I've got a really, really good one for you. I'm gonna show you how to go from a smooth coaster like this to a 3D relief image just like these ones right here. Super simple, but super effective and a really, really good string to add to your bow. So if you'd like to know the full process, the settings, the setup, stick around and we're gonna run through absolutely everything. So let's have some fun. What will you need for this today? You're gonna to need a bamboo coaster or a wooden coaster. You can try any wood. You're gonna need a diode laser engraver. We're using the X-Tool F2 in this case, but this will work with the F1 Ultra, the F1 and the F2 Ultra. It's just a case of adjusting your settings accordingly. So what we're gonna be using is a bamboo coaster and this one is 100 millimeters in diameter. I've tested these massively and I've come up with some really nice settings. So let's crack on and I'll show you what we need to do. In this case, I've got a self-centering jig which I'm using just to pull this inwards and, and guarantee the position but there is absolutely nothing stopping you just putting the base plate in and laying it on top of the base plate. It's whatever you prefer. I like repeatability, so that's why I'm doing. So I'm gonna lock that into place, rotate it around, and then what we're gonna do here is we are gonna focus the laser. At the moment, the two dots are not joined together, so on the side of the machine, we have a knob right here. We are gonna turn it clockwise, and those two dots are gonna come together and then we are happy with that. Let's move on over to Xtool Studio. Here we are, we are on the main Xtool Studio screen and we're gonna be clicking new project in the top right. It will connect us to our machine as you just heard there. What we're gonna do now is we have manually done the focus, but we'll do an auto focus just to show you how you go about doing it. It's gonna turn the lights off, take the measurement, turn the light back on, and then it should update the image with our focused laser and our coaster. And as you can see there, that is absolutely perfect what we need. So I wanted to start off by explaining what we need to actually do this. And we need something called a low relief image. And what you can see on the screen right here is a low relief image I actually generated. I generated this one using AI Make, which is an X tool software. It does use credits to do. I'm gonna be doing it again today to walk you through the process. They haven't asked me to do this. I'm not getting paid to do it. It's just what I do because it works nicely. But I wanted to show you some alternative methods and you can actually Google low relief engraving images and you can buy them on Etsy or there probably are some available in here if you search for them or you could also get chat GPT to generate a few there's options but in this case I am going to be going on to the Atom website as you can see here and I've signed into my account and I'm going to be using AI make which we click on here and it's going to bring us to this screen right here you can see my previous generations right there and we're gonna do a brand new one for this video just so you can get an experience of the whole process. Now, the first thing we wanna do is we wanna click on style. The style is basically gonna give us lots of different options and you'll see there are a lot of things we can choose from. In this case, we want low relief because it's gonna generate an image which is perfect for our low relief 3D engravings. So let's click on low relief and it's now put low relief there. And all you do here, it's really simple. First thing you should do is select your aspect ratio. We have a 100 millimeter diameter coaster. They don't have a round option, so I am going for a square and I'm gonna apply a mask onto it and I'll show you how to do that. So we're at a point now where we need to decide what we want to engrave. I think in this case, I'm gonna do a cat. Only because I've done a dog, I've done a lion. Let's do something different. And whilst you guys are watching, I may as well do it. So I'm gonna put a majestic looking cat with a detailed background. I'm just gonna put that, something really, really simple, okay? and we're gonna click that arrow back there and it's gonna bring up a brand new screen and what it's doing now in the style of low relief, as I said, it is thinking and it is 63% through. It's gonna generate us an image and we can tell if we like it or not. And as I said, this does use credits. I think you get a certain amount of free credits, so feel free to use them trying this out, but there probably are projects on Atom where you can actually use someone else's low relief image that they've already generated. Okay, so as you can see, it has generated us a really cool image of a cat with a, a detailed background as we've asked. Like I said, it does do it in a square, but it doesn't matter for us in this case, we're gonna crop that out. So what I will say is you can actually do a number of different adjustments at this point. We're not gonna do that. What we're gonna do is click the download button right there. It's gonna download it. We're gonna go back into Xtool Studio. I'm gonna delete this good boy off of the picture. Then we are gonna click on the import image bit there and we're gonna bring our cat in and there you go. Step one complete. We have our image and I think this is actually gonna look really, really good. 
So the next thing we need to do is we need to make this round so that it fits on my coaster. If you've got a square coaster, you're laughing, you've got no problem, no issues. For me, like I said, I want it to fill out the coaster as much as possible. If it was a square, it would just look silly. So what I'm gonna do is I know my coaster is 100 millimeters in diameter. So I am gonna click on vector shapes on the left circle. I'm gonna hold the shift key and left mouse button drag. What that does is it locks the aspect ratio so you get a perfect circle. And I'm gonna go up here and select, so it's a 100 millimeter coaster. I'm gonna do it 95 millimeters diameter. I don't want it right on the edge. I want it just to be, I want there to be a nice perimeter on it. So I'm gonna make sure it's centrally located drag it up a little bit with the arrow keys and we're good to go. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna position this centrally in relation to that circle and then grabbing the middle handle. And the reason I say the middle handle, if you grab a corner, it anchors in the bottom left and it doesn't centrally increase the size. But if you grab it by one of the middle handles, it stays in its position and it increases. That's good. So I'm gonna make it big enough that I think I can crop it. So there we go roughly put it in the right position. So if I zoom out a little bit, we've now got our circle, which I'll show you, I'll highlight there in blue. We've got our image. I wanna now crop that out. So select everything, right click, and then create mask. And you'll get a faded section around and a dark color. That is basically showing us what we're gonna cut out and what we're not gonna cut out. And you can see up here, the circle that we're gonna be cutting out with, we can still edit it. And what I will say is these images, it never makes them perfectly round for some reason. I don't know why, it just doesn't. So in this case, I'm gonna unlock that aspect ratio and I'm just gonna manually drag it close enough that it looks like it covers it nicely. And if I just select that one there, and I'm gonna use the arrows just to adjust it. I want it as central as possible and as circular as possible. That looks good to me, so I'm gonna click done. And there you go, we now have our circular image perfect and ready for us to actually engrave onto our item. The next thing we need to do is actually prepare this. And this is where things get a little bit more complicated, but I promise you it's really easy. And if you follow my instructions, it's gonna work perfectly. So let's get this centralized in relation to the picture. We will frame it later. I'm gonna increase the size because I did reduce it. And I'm gonna probably make it 94 millimeters, I think. And in this case, I am then gonna make it a perfect circle again and lock the aspect ratio. So 94 width, 94 height. And that puts us in this position. Now we're gonna edit this photo, okay? All we need to do at this point is click on, we need to select the image, select edit, and go to adjustments in the top left. And we are just gonna increase the sharpness to the full amount it allows us. So just like that, and the reason we do that is we wanna add as much definition to this as possible because the more definition we have, the more detail we have. Hopefully that makes sense. So there you go, that is it. That, that image is edited as much as we need it to be edited. What we're gonna do next though is the secret source. So I'll show you the secret source right now. So what we need to do next is we need to copy and paste. So I press Control and C and then Control V. And we have now got a duplicate of that image. So at this point, what we are gonna do is we are gonna make sure this first image is on a layer we're happy with. I'm gonna make it a red layer. The second image, we're gonna right click on it and select its own layer. And I'm gonna go for a green one. It's not gonna change the actual color, but it's gonna come in handy in a minute and you'll see why. So we know that our green layer is our second image we brought in. So what we'll do next, we need to edit this. So the way we're gonna be engraving this is we're gonna do two engraving passes. The first one will be a standard engrave, and then we're gonna do a high contrast engrave for the second one. And the point of that will be to get some really nice, dark, deep engraving to add that 3D relief effect. So click on edit, go to adjustment, and now we are gonna tick the grayscale box. And you'll see it will make it black and white. Then getting the slider, it will start on 255, drag it down to approximately 170. I think will be good enough in this case, if I can get there. There you go. And as you can see, it also makes it really, really light and really dark. And with, with wood engraving, if it's light, it means it's gonna barely touch it. If it's dark, it means it's gonna get a deep engrave. So what we're doing with this is we're basically showing it the areas we want it to do a deeper engrave. And that is key, this is really key. You'll see the sharpness has remained at 50, that is perfect, we want that. 
So we're now going to position both of these over the top of each other because they need to be exactly on top of each other. So what we'll do, drag a box over both of them, select the drop down arrow here on the align toolbar and align center. There you go. Good as that. Once you get to that point, right click and group because now that is a, that's a united group which we can adjust the settings for just once instead of having to do it for each image. So the next thing we need to do is we need to adjust the layer order to make sure this engraves in the right order. Because like I said, this one here, this, this black and white image, we want to engrave second. So in the bottom left here, you're going to see layer and object list. If we, if we tick on that, you'll see you've got color and you've got a green layer and a red layer. If you remember right, our red layer was our first image and our green layer is this image you can see right here. What I'm going to do to make it easier for me personally is I'm going to right click and rename and I'm going to call the first one first pass and then I'm going to right click on the top layer and call it second pass. This is just for me so that I don't get confused but I recommend doing it because it makes life a lot easier. Now the way we're going to engrave this is in layer order so we want that first layer the first pass layer, the red one, to be at the top. So drag it to the top, as I've just done there, and now we have our first layer in the pole position at the top. That will come in handy in a minute, I'll show you why. The next thing we need to do, so we've got everything set up, we've got the layers set up, we've got the actual images adjusted, we're good. Now we need to apply our material setting. So I have done extensive testing on this, all right? I think I've done it six or seven times, but I've managed to get some really nice settings that work really well with the F2. For the F1, try the same settings. I'm pretty sure they will work. For the F1 Ultra, take down the power a little bit more, maybe increase the dot duration. Either way, let me show you the settings. So in material, I have set up a material. I am gonna be sharing all of my materials at some point. I can export them and I will be doing that just to let you all know. You'll see I've got a number of things. Here's the first test I did, but what I ended up coming up with is blue light, that's key. Blue light, it has to be. Dot duration 185, power is 80%, DPI 700, and change your bitmap mode to Atkinson. That is critical as well, okay? And these settings, these are the magic sweet spot settings for this because believe me when I say, the fine line between burning the engraving and having no 3D relief, pretty fine to be honest with you. So this is that sweet spot in the middle from my testing. Okay, so we're happy with that. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to frame this to make sure we are happy with its position on the coaster. What we're going to do is bottom right over here, you'll see that hatched box, that's to frame. But by default, it's on rectangular. If we select frame now, it is going to frame that box you can see around the outside. We don't want that. So select the arrow and click on outline. Drag up the power a little bit and there you go. Let's click frame and let's have a look where it is. So as you can see, our framing is absolutely perfect. In this case, I am happy with that. So I am ready to move on and start the engraving. So let's show you that process. So there you go, we framed it, we're happy. So the next thing we need to do down in this process tab, click on the arrow and then click on auto planning. Select user defining and we are gonna turn on by layer. Remember, we want this to engrave in a very specific layer order and doing this will allow that to happen. We're now gonna click the process button. Before I do that, I will say these do take a long time. They usually take between 40 minutes to an hour, but what I will say is they are well worth the wait. You get a really great piece at the end of it. So I would implore you to actually give it a try at this point. So there you go, one hour. I'm gonna start the engraving. I'm gonna record the whole process for you guys to watch and then we can look at the results at the end, so stay around for that. At this point, it is a good time for me to make a safety announcement. This will be producing a lot of smoke and it's using the blue diode, so make sure you close your lid and also make sure you have good extraction for this one because you might get a smoky smell in the air if you don't. And ultimately, you just wanna keep those fumes flying out, so let's crack on. We have finished. 
but now what we need to do first, you'll see there is some slight charring on it. We are gonna use 99% isopropyl alcohol. We're gonna give it a spray, and I like to absolutely cake it at this point. There you go, and then just get yourself a little paper towel and just prod it and you'll see quite a lot comes off of these. And this bit's really important because no matter what settings you have, you will get an element of charring and this just helps take off that charring and you can see how much is coming off. So I like to pat it hard and that way it doesn't break apart and go into all the gap. But yeah, let's take a look at this. This has come out so nice. I mean, if you put some kind of varnish on it or protective coat. So there you have it. Look how good that looks. I mean, it's come out so clear. It's really, really contrasting. I love it and I'll give you another little show and tell of the other one. So I've done exactly the same technique on all three of these, and you probably agree. They come out so well, and there's so much potential with these. You can make them for gifts, you can make them to sell, but either way, you should try out the settings and let me know how you get on. So thank you for watching. I'm sure you'll agree, this has been absolutely outstanding. I'm really, really happy with how it came out and I hope you, you see all these tutorials I'm doing and it gives you the confidence to try it yourself because you'll see everything is achievable. You just have to have a go and just do it. And in this case, you can produce something that looks really professional, really artistic with very little input and that is something that is really worth it. So if this has been helpful to you, please like the video, please comment below letting me know what you would like to do as a project and also follow our Xtool F2 group and our Xtool F series maker group on Facebook. They are full of helpful people, it's a great community and we're all there to help you out and bring everyone up together. My favourite saying is when the tide rises, all ships rise together and that that is how I see this. We're all getting better together. We're all improving the laser industry. So thank you so much for watching and have a great day. See you later, guys.